Well, happy Thanksgiving all. Today we are going to get ready for Thanksgiving together. We're gonna to be cooking, making cocktails, and just having a great time. If you're living in the States, you know that Thanksgiving is a magical time to come together with friends and family. As fast as the world is turning right now, it has never been more important to slow down, enjoy a glass of wine, some fireside storytelling, and some long, warm hugs. Today we are going to prepare the house to present a feast of food, friendship, and gratitude once again with our loved ones. I wanna take a moment and say thank you to each each and every one of you for being a part of my channel and subscribing to bring this dream of mine to share food, cooking, home decorating, and homemaking with each of you. So thank you for making that possible. And if you are new, I would be so honored if you would subscribe. It is completely free and it allows us to stay together and to continue to decorate throughout all the holidays. All right, guys, let's get into this video. Growing up is just a big fat trail. I take pride in it. Okay guys, so I am totally ready to go. It is about seven o'clock in the morning. Here's everything we have to do today. I'm gonna start stocking recipe trays and then I'll start preparing some apps, just kind of getting them ready and set. And at 10 o'clock, we're gonna put the turkey in. I may even put the turkey in at nine o'clock. I'm not sure, we'll figure that out. And then I'm gonna get going on a lot of these other sides. So what I have left to do here, I've already done all these. I just have the pumpkin hummus and the baked brie. It's just like a big wheel of brie that I bake with some really fun apple butter and some other things. We're gonna put the turkey in the maple bacon brussels sprouts that's super easy it can take me 20 minutes the apple i might let the kids help me start kind of cutting up the stuff to go in this salad and then the potatoes are gratin and then we've got green beans the green beans are already cooked ready to go i just need to wrap them in bacon and bake them for about 15 minutes that's it okay guys so here we are so i'm going to preheat this to 400 get that in the oven we're gonna bake it for 30 minutes while that's cooking I'm gonna go take a quick shower and then I need to get the house kind of set and ready for today I've got all of our sides ready to go Brussels sprouts potatoes and then I think what else I'm gonna do this morning oh hi cuties you want to say hi Hello. oh so cute <laughs> the okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is actually use my robo rock we're gonna put the robo rock on the floor mopping setting i'll show you guys how this works it's really easy you just fill this up water with water removed well thank you uh you want to come back mimi so cute um, tank installed. Well, thank you. So I'm just gonna add some water in here and then there's actually a front piece that goes on here that kind of just mops up everything. That way it's ready to go after um, I'm done cooking so I can have really nice floors before my guests get here. And this is kind of the setup. So this is the piece I use to film when I do cook with me. Is I dream of having a kitchen where this is like here all the time. That would be so cool. Okay guys, oh, let's get good. So the first thing I always like to do before any holiday is make sure that I always have my beverage station stocked. Since I am going to be doing all of Thanksgiving, I wanna make sure that if I, people show up a little early and I'm not done heating up apps, I at least can put a nice delicious beverage in their hand. I'm gonna be making three of my favorite drinks ever. If you guys are new to my channel, you may not know this, but I absolutely love mulled wine. I know, I know it's kind of an older drink, but it's delicious and I'm gonna share this recipe with you today. I wanted to first say thank you to Barefoot for sponsoring this channel. You guys know I'm a huge wine drinker. I also am an executive in the wine industry and I'm just super pumped that they wanted to do this awesome collab with me today. So the first thing we're going to do is chop up some apples, some fresh pear. I'm going to be putting a little bit of clove in these. I think it looks cute, but it also is a nice simmer for the day. The one piece of advice I would give you is don't add any cinnamon sticks or straight clove right into the mold wine. It gives it a very bitter taste and almost like when you drink tea and you leave the tea bag in too long it kind of like strips your teeth you don't want that so what I like to do is actually do 750 mls of red wine I love using this particular red wine they have it's got a rich balanced taste to it it's very full-bodied and it's perfect with this you can either drink it alone which is delicious I like to put it in a nice decanter and put it on our table for dinner or you can make it this way so all you need to do is add the entire bottle of wine to a nice pot bring it to a very very slow simmer then we're gonna add two cups 
of, I like to use the Trader Joe's spice cider, but really any spice cider will do as long as it's not a sparkling spice cider. Then I add my fruit in and I let that simmer for about an hour. So the next recipe I always like to make is a holiday sangria. This is basically like a summer sangria, except we're gonna use things like nutmeg and some other spices just to give it a nice kick for the holidays. So inside the sangria, I like to add some apples. I'm gonna use some fresh pears, and then I'm gonna be adding in one of their wines, which is called a sweet red wine. What I love about the sweet red wine is I typically will sweeten up any sangria, and this does it for me. I don't even have to add any sugar or anything else to the sangria I just have to add the barefoot sweet red blend and then I'm also going to be using one of my favorite things they make and I love to have this during the summer but they make a barefoot spritzer which is apple and pear which is absolutely perfect for this sangria it also is made from white wine so it goes perfectly I like to throw all of that into a nice pitcher and I let that sit for about an hour in the refrigerator I will serve it with a nice little garnish right when I go to serve it but you'll have to wait to see what that looks like in a minute I am my heart's only owner I'd love to take a minute and remind you to hit that like button if you are excited to see my Christmas decor this year. And definitely don't forget to subscribe. It's going to be awesome. So the last beverage I'm going to be serving for Thanksgiving will be a frosted cranberry champagne. This is very simple, but what I like to do is poke a hole with a toothpick and the cranberries, and then I pick some rosemary out of the garden. I shave off half of the little leaves there, and then I just thread through the cranberries. I think it's just a nice touch on top. I would suggest not putting the... Uh, rosemary inside the glass because it will change the flavor. I love the bubbly um, barefoot brute. It is so good and it's got a nice crisp flavor and it's nice and dry. So I absolutely love this champagne. I use it all the time. So what I like to do is take a champagne glass. I pick these up at Home Goods just in case you guys are wondering and I put it in a little simple syrup. I like to coat as much of the sides as I can and then I dip it for about 30 seconds into some powdered sugar. This is going to give it a nice kind of snowy top that is so delicious when you go to drink the champagne it gives it like a little touch of sweetness it's so good and then we're just going to top it with this really cute garnish and see how beautiful and festive it turns out you can make all of these champagne glasses in the morning and have them ready to go that's the one thing i do love about the powdered sugar is they stay all day long so definitely try to make them ahead of time and just have your garnishes ready to go for when your guests get there that way you can keep your champagne in the refrigerator and then serve it when it's ready Single and stolen kiss, and if that ain't love, I don't know what it is. If that ain't love, I don't know what it is. So for the sangria, I wanted to add a really beautiful kind of rustic garnish on top so I'm going to be using the tops of the pears that I've had in some of the other recipes this evening and I just think this turns out super cute you can also take it off and take a bite if you'd like and then for my favorite mold wine I always use this trick these are just little toothpicks that you can just shove the cinnamon sticks on that way they stick out and look cute and if people want to flip them upside down and actually stir their mold wine with it they can for a little bit that way it doesn't get too tangy but still gives it that nice wonderful warm effect and last but not least all you have to do with our champagne is add that adorable garnish and serve it to your guests I hope you guys enjoyed these wonderful little recipes and if you are looking for some wines to serve this holiday I highly recommend the barefoot collection today I use the barefoot sweet red blend I use the barefoot Cabernet Sauvignon I did the rich and balanced because it's my favorite but you could really get any which one you'd like and I also used the uh, barefoot bubbly brute which is my favorite it's nice and dry it's not too sweet that way when I do my little um, frosted tops it doesn't get too sweet all right guys let's get cooking okay so let's take a look our bird is cooking and got 
everything set up here to get started. I'm going to slice these up for our potatoes of gratin, get these fried up and ready to go. This is gonna be so good. I've got our appetizers ready, and then I've also got, I'm gonna add some carrots and maple carrots to tonight's dinner. I'm gonna make a little more stuffing as well. And I just got everything else I need here ready to go. Sorry, we're vacuuming. And that's it. Let's go. So the first recipes I like to really get out of the way at Thanksgiving are the simple ones. So I'm going to be making our salad and salad dressing first just to get it done and wrapped up and on the side. I'm going to be using one of my favorite recipes today. I'm going to be using my roasted garlic vinaigrette. I love this. I am going to link all of the recipes that you guys saw today and in my other Thanksgiving cook with me. So definitely look down below in the descriptions for all of these recipes. But basically what I like to do is roast two garlic bulbs. All you have to do is cut the tops off, put a little olive oil, wrap them up in foil, and cook them for about 40 minutes at 350 in the oven. Once they're done roasting, you can go ahead and let them cool for a while. Then what I like to do is squeeze out all of the roasted garlic and put it into a pile. We're gonna just lightly chop this up and smash it up just a little, and then we're gonna throw it into a food processor. I always find this is the easiest way to do this, or you can take your time and actually just mince it up, and it's just as great. Then what we're gonna do is add one half of a lemon, two teaspoons of maple syrup, and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I like to add a little bit of salt and pepper in there, and then I'm just going to add one half of a shallot. I'm also gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Once I have all that in the blender, I'm just gonna blend that up and set it in the refrigerator. And sticking with the apples and pear theme, I'm gonna be using some Italian pears here. You can also use some Asian pears. They're also super delicious. I like these because they're super hearty and they also um, have a really crisp flavor to them. They're just really, really yummy. So I'm gonna be adding those into the salad. I'm also going to be adding some delicious pomegranates. I found some nice pomegranates at the grocery store finally. If you wanna avoid the mess, you can always buy these already kind of pre-extracted. I just like to use them. I think this is super delicious and I think the flavor's a little better too. But anyway, I'm gonna be adding the dressing in at the last minute. For this base, I'm just gonna be using a spring mix. I like this because it comes with spinach and arugula. Then I'm gonna be adding my pears. I'm gonna add our pomegranates and then I'm gonna be adding some walnuts and some dried cranberries as well. So once you're done prepping the salad, you can go ahead and wrap it up and set it aside undressed for dinner. So for the next recipe, we're gonna be making bacon wrapped green beans. Now, you guys know that I already cooked and blanched the green beans the night before, so they're ready to go. All I need to do is now wrap them in bacon. I absolutely love this. You can do this many different ways. You can pre-cook bacon and then wrap it at the last minute, but I actually like it this way better. Plus, I also feel like the bacon fat really infuses into the green beans. So all you need to do is wrap these up, and then I actually push it down to make it a little flat. That way it doesn't roll around. And I'm gonna be putting it on a baking sheet. I'm gonna bake this for about 30 minutes on 350 or until it's nice and crunchy. So the next recipe I'm gonna make is a maple brown sugar carrot. Now I make these for my kids all the time, but I'm gonna be sharing this with our guests for Thanksgiving. So I like to get the little carrots, you know, the long ones that still have the stems on them. I like those, they're a lot thinner. Um, but the idea is that if you're gonna roast carrots, you want everything to be about the same size. That way some aren't you know, overcooking or undercooking. So I'm gonna chop all these up and roast them for about 20 minutes in the oven. Since I am gonna to need to reheat these for my guests, I'm not gonna add the maple syrup and the brown sugar until I go to reheat them later. Mm -hmm. 
The next recipe is our potatoes au gratin. Now this has to be one of my favorites. I'm gonna be using a Yukon Gold here, but you can really use any potato, a russet, just as long as it's nice and big. I like the Yukon Golds, I just think they're so creamy and delicious. I'm gonna use a mandolin and just slice all these up so they're all the same size. Then I'm gonna be using a cast iron skillet. This is a 12 inch. I'm gonna paint on a little bit of olive oil, that way nothing sticks to the pan and everything cooks evenly. Once I have that done, just like I did my ratatouille, which I'll definitely link down below you guys should definitely make that for your family this holiday I'm gonna go ahead and just layer all the potatoes on the bottom once I get a solid layer done I'm gonna be adding shredded Gruyere cheese and Swiss and some fresh diced leeks and a little salt and pepper I also like to add a little nutmeg in here and then I'm just gonna keep layering and layering and layering until I'm out of potatoes So now that we're on our last layer, I'm just going to put all of the potatoes on top. I'm super lucky because I literally had just enough potatoes to do this entire layer. I didn't think I'd be able to get it done. Super happy that I did. So now that I have them done, I'm going to add a couple cubes of butter on here and I'm going to put this on the stove and try to bring it up to a boil. We're also going to be adding about two to three cups of heavy whipping cream. Now you will have to gauge this depending on how big your cast iron skillet is, but you want it to be about three three-fourths of the way to the top so not submerging the top but just three-fourths way up and that's what you want to bring to a boil once everything comes to a boil you can then bake it for about 20 minutes but since my guests won't be here for a while I'm gonna set it aside and bake it right before they arrive The next dish is going to be a bacon bourbon sweet potato. I make this every year, but basically all you need to do is get some sweet potatoes, bring them to a boil and get them ready to mash up just like mashed potatoes. I'm gonna take one stick of butter and I'm going to reduce it down to a brown butter. So that's basically like melted butter and then you cook it a little longer until it actually turns brown. Then we're gonna add that into our sweet potatoes and mix it all up. Once we're done with that, I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of bourbon and mix that all up. Once that's done and ready to go on the table, I'm gonna to top it with a little bit of bacon. So our next dish is a southern corn pudding. This is one of my favorite recipes, but I will link down below one of my favorites. It's not actually mine, so I will definitely link uh, the recipe. But you're gonna use two eggs and then two cans of creamed corn. I use a sweet cream corn and then one can of just regular corn. Once you get that all mixed together, we're gonna fold in some nutmeg and then one half cup of sour cream. I like to mix everything before I add a box of Jiffy corn mix. Go ahead and add that in and give that a really, really good mix. Make sure everything is well incorporated before we add it to the Pyrex. Now you guys know that I baked this the day before, so we will be reheating this. I just realized I didn't share it with you in the last video. So about an hour before dinner is gonna be served, I like to get all of my dishes back in the oven on a low simmer. This is a nice way to keep everything warm but not overcook things. For the potatoes au gratin, I do need to cook that for a good 20 minutes, so I'm gonna actually heat that in the big oven so I get it nice and, and crunchy on top, which I used a little Parmesan cheese, that's a nice trick to make it nice and crunchy. Then in the small oven, I'm gonna be putting my carrots. On top, I put a little bit of brown sugar and some fresh thyme. I also added my bacon wrapped green beans as well. I'm going to be heating up my butternut squash soup that I made the night before and I've already heated up all my apps. I like to get my apps on the table about five minutes before my guests are going to arrive. That way they're ready to go and if you did just pull them out of the oven it gives them time to cool. Thank you. 
If you do have some leftover herbs from your little herb caddy, you can go ahead and add them to some of your dishes just to make them look nice and festive. Now that I have my Brussels sprouts done, I'm gonna add the bacon and turn the heat off. Right before I go to serve this, I will heat it back up and that bacon fat will release and it'll be so good. I also love to top the maple syrup, that way everything gets nice and incorporated and you can heat this up really anytime before you're ready to put it on the table. I love that how our carrots turned out. Go ahead and remove those thyme leaves and then just put some fresh ones on. It is so yummy. I don't know what it is about maple syrup and thyme, but it is so good. Now that I have everything ready, I'm gonna go ahead and get the table set and get our drinks ready. So here is how everything turned out. We've got our butternut squash soup with some delicious thyme and bacon, our pimento cheddar cheese dip, mm, so good. We have our barefoot champagne, we've got some mulled wine, and we've got some sangria. Oh girl, those were so good. And then we have these wonderful little brie cups. I love these. You guys know I love to cook with puff pastry and these were awesome. Next to that, we have some delicious bacon wrapped green beans. These are so good. If you eat it in the middle with the bacon first, oh my God, it's mouthwatering. Then we've got some bacon Brussels sprouts, some delicious carrots with some thyme on top. My kids ate all of those, by the way. And then we've got our corn pudding, which who doesn't love some Southern corn pudding? We've got our mashed sweet potatoes. We've got some salad. This salad was so crunchy and delicious potatoes a gratin. Oh my God, these were so creamy and mouthwatering. Still doesn't replace the good old mashed potatoes, but gosh, they were good. Then we've got some stuffing and then our turkey. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I wanna give a huge thank you to Barefoot for sponsoring today's video and also making awesome wines that are affordable that we can all enjoy together. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be Christmas. Bye.